My talk today is titled, Be Distinct or Be Extinct. How we can take hold of our own future and shape our own futures. The fact is this, we live in a world of challenge and change and competition. We now live in a world where what worked yesterday might not work today and might be completely irrelevant tomorrow, especially in the times we find ourselves now. We live in a time where organizations and people and every single person on the planet have to ask themselves some very important questions, which are these. Firstly, what must we do to ensure that we survive and that we thrive? And secondly, who must we become to ensure that in the hearts and minds of our customers, our clients, and those that we serve, we remain distinct so that we don't become extinct? Here's a fact. I think our survival and our ability to thrive in a changing world, in a disruptive world, is driven by a number of factors. First of all, the extent to which we can actually adapt quickly, rapidly, and intelligently in a changing world. And secondly, the extent to which we can actually give excellence in every single thing that we do. And thirdly, the extent to which we can bring our customers and our clients to the very center of what we do and how we do what we do. We have to build our business and organizations around them and not the other way around. Let me share a story with you that illustrates this point. A few years ago, I was giving a talk in Cape Town for the airport company South Africa. I gave my talk, and after my talk, I was in my hotel room. While I was there, my cell phone rings. Bring, bring, I answer the phone. The guy on the other hand calls me and says, Mr. Adebanji, I said, yes. He says, this is Mohammed. I'm like, how's it, Mohammed? How are you doing? And I'm very well, thank you. And I'm thinking to myself, I have no idea who this guy is, right? And he says to me, I'm your cab driver for tomorrow. I know your flight is at 10 o'clock tomorrow. You're leaving Cape Town at 10 o'clock tomorrow. What time shall I pick you up? So now I'm impressed and thinking to myself, wow, this is really impressive. This guy is calling me the day before my flight. So I said to him, I said, look, you're right. If you pick me up around, say, 8 o'clock tomorrow, does that work for you? He said, yes, perfect. We agreed. 8 o'clock the next morning. The next morning, 8 o'clock sharp, Muhammad was at the hotel. He helps me, he takes my luggage, puts it in the boot of his car, he gets to the front to get in, I open the door at the back to get in, and as I open the passenger door of Muhammad's car, I see things I've never seen before in a cab, and my entire world began to unravel. What do I see in Muhammad's car? Well, I see two bottles of water, still and sparkling. Still water and sparkling water. I see some breath mints, some hand lotions, I see the Cape Times newspaper, I see a notepad, I see a very expensive looking pen. The pen is not exactly a Mont Blanc, but it's not a Fong Kong, or well, we call it Fong Kong here, it's not a cheap pen either, you know, it's kind of in between. So he's at the front, he's very relaxed and everything, so I'm a bit apprehensive because I've never seen these things in a cab before, remember, it's, it's, a, it's a cab driver. So I sat very far away from the stuff. I kind of kept my distance from the stuff. I, you know, I, I moved my, my thighs apart because I was kind of nervous. I don't want to be accused of pilfering or taking stuff that's not mine. So he saw the apprehensive look on my face with the rearview mirror. He turns around casually, looks at me, and says, Mr. Banji, relax. You're in Cape Town. The paper's yours. The mint's yours. You know, the, the hand lotion is yours. He never mentioned the pen. So you understand what it means. Don't touch the pen, inverted commas. But the fact is, I still wasn't convinced. I was waiting for that four-letter magic word. Mohammed looks at me again casually. He says, Mr. Debanji, listen, you're in Cape Town. Relax. It's on the house. It's free. Free, the four-letter magic word. I went, yes! Now, I didn't go yes in front of him in a scab, otherwise he'll throw me out, right? I went, yes, in my head, because I'm thinking, this is unbelievable, right? So we're about to leave. And here's the thing. The story gets better. Just before we drive off, he looks at me again. He says, Sadi Banji, by the way, would you like the radio on or off? Or is there a specific kind of music that you like? Now, at this moment, I'm a bit apprehensive. I'm a bit suspicious because I'm thinking nobody is that good. This guy cannot be that good. It's impossible. In fact, I'm suspicious thinking I'm on a, on a, on a, on a show, Africa's Funniest Home Videos, and they have cameras in there all looking at me and being streamed all over the world, and people are having a big laugh. So I said, well, you know what? Let me try this guy out just in case it's a gimmick of some sort. So I said to him, by the way, you know what? I actually, I like lounge music. I'm, I'm a big fan of lounge music, specifically Buddha Bar. He grabs his MP3 player, his, his, his iPod, he begins to scroll, you know, very casually. After about 30 seconds, he turns around, he looks at me, he says, Mr. Adebanji, unfortunately, I don't have Buddha Bar on the lounge music, but I do have Café Del Mar on the lounge music. How would that suit you? Ladies and gents, my jaw dropped. 
And I said to him, Mohammed, right now, I don't care if you play me marimba music or Scottish bagpipes. No offense, I love Scottish bagpipes. I'm marimba music. But I said to him, I don't care what you play me right now. Because what you have done is taken something as ordinary as a trip to the airport and made that extraordinary. What you have done is taking something as mundane as a trip to the airport and made that spectacular. We get to the airport and I gave him a big, huge tip. And here's the point of my story. I asked him, I was curious, I asked him, I said, Mohammed, why have you gone through all this trouble, all this effort? I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, don't lower your standards now. When next time I'm in Cape Town, I want to have the same experience. But why have you gone through all this trouble? He looked at me dead in the eye. He said, Mr. Debanji, it's very simple. The tourism industry in Cape Town is going through a lot of change, a lot of disruption, a lot of challenge. If I don't adapt to those changes, if I'm not agile and innovative in my environment, in my industry, I will be out on the street. If I don't build my business around my customers and bring my clients to the very center of what I do and how I do what I do, I will actually be unemployed. And if I don't deliver excellence and high performance in every single thing that I do, my family will be in trouble. Here's the reality. In the world that we find ourselves now, our survival and our ability to thrive is driven by the extent to which we build our business around our customers, we deliver excellence in all that we do, and we're willing to be adaptive and be agile quickly, rapidly, and intelligently in a changing world. You see, we live in a time of unprecedented change. We live in unprecedented times. There are no rule books for the times that we find ourselves in. But here's the truth and also here's the sad reality. In the times that we find ourselves in, you will find organizations and individuals that will survive and those that will not. In the times that we find ourselves, the truth is you will find organizations and individuals that will thrive and they will use this time as a launching pad for greater things. And on the flip side, there will be those that will be not be able to survive and thrive. You find organizations and people that will be able to seize their future, take control of their future, shape their future in spite of the disruption and the difficulties that we experience right now and those that will not. What this indicates is very simple. It's not the change or the disruption or the challenges or the problems that we we'll face that define success or failure. Rather, it's our response in the face of our issues. It's our response in the face of our challenges. It's our response in the face of change and disruption. That is what ultimately defines our success or our failure. It's how we respond to these issues in spite of how difficult they may be. Those are the factors that determine whether or not we can take hold of our own future and shape our own future. It's not the environment that matters. It's how we respond within the environment that matters. Let me share another story with you that illustrates this point. Some time ago, I was catching a flight from Johannesburg International Airport to Cape Town, and I had to use the gents, right? So I ran to the gents, used the gents, and standing by the door was the janitor in his outfit with the mop looking very smart. As I run in to use the gents, he says, that, you know, he's standing and says to me, good day, sir, welcome to my office, have a nice day. Yeah, I was shocked as well. So I'm thinking, this guy can't be for real, right? It's, it's impossible, you know? So he says to me, enjoy your stay in my office, sir. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I ran to the gents, did my thing. As I'm coming out, he says to me again, did you enjoy your stay in my office, sir? Is there anything else I can do for you? I'm thinking, no way, man. This guy is kidding around. So I kind of forgot about it, ignored him, and, you know, went and caught my flight. Now, I'm on the road a lot. And I used the bathroom a lot before my flight just to make sure there are no issues. And I began to watch this guy, and he was consistent. He said the same thing to every gentleman that came to the bathroom. He was courteous and he gave them a good experience. Good day, so welcome to my office, have a nice day. He even offered to give them the towel and the tissue, everything that they needed, even wiped their shoes if necessary. And I was really impressed and I realized now this guy is the real deal. He's looking beyond the fact that he's a janitor, he's looking beyond his environment and he's asking himself, how can I give 110% in spite of what I'm doing? And I watched him very closely and I realized he was getting tipped 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks. And I did a very simple, simple rudimentary math. And I said to myself, if he's getting paid 10 bucks from 10 people a day, that is 100 bucks a day. In a month, he's making easily between two and a half to 3,000 bucks every single month. For someone who cleans toilets for a living, that is a heck of a lot of money. 
And what has he done? He's looked beyond his environment and asked himself, how can I become adaptive and innovative and be agile and make myself distinct in the midst of my environment? He's looked beyond his environment and said, how can I bring those that I serve to the very center of what I'm doing and how I do what I do? He's looked beyond his environment and said to himself, how can I give excellence in every single thing that I do? And because of that, he was rewarded for it. In the world that we find ourselves now, the reality is very simple. Our ability to survive and to thrive is driven by our response. And it's how we respond that ultimately will drive our success and our failure. And it's how we respond that ultimately will equip us and allow us to shape and take hold of our own futures. We live in a world of challenge and change and contribution. We live in a world where what worked yesterday might not work today and might be completely irrelevant tomorrow. We now live in a time in the world where organizations and people, every single person on this planet must ask themselves, number one, what must we do to ensure that we survive and thrive? And who must we become and what must we do differently to ensure that in the hearts and minds of our clients and those that we serve, we are distinct so that we don't become extinct. These are the factors that will allow us, equip us, and position us to take hold of our future in spite of the disruption that's around us. And these are the factors that will allow us to be distinct so that we don't become extinct. Thank you very much.